All right, guys, welcome back to the new old school podcast. This is a pretty decently sized podcast this, today, JP, wouldn't you say? Oh, uh, yeah, number 26 for the win. For the win. I don't know. This is a pretty decently sized podcast this, oh, today, boy. JP, wouldn't you say? Oh, uh, yeah, number 26. Gonna... Mute yeah. that. So anyway, uh, today on the podcast, after some technical difficulties, we finally were able to go live with uh, Abdullah Saheed. He is from Vice, Viceland, former... Uh, High Times editor and former editor in chief at Karma Loop, and many, many other things. How mm-hmm. you doing today, man? How's it going, dudes? Thanks so much for having me Welcome on. Welcome in. Sorry about the uh, difficulties earlier. Ah, uh, no big deal. But it happens. It yeah. happens. Yeah, it does. <laughs> so, but, uh, yeah. So, uh, you just wrapped up a couple weeks ago on uh, Vice Does America, your uh, seven episode uh, season of you and your two uh, co-workers traveling across the country talking about the election and uh, seeing their opinions and stuff, right? Yeah, yeah, that's right. So um, basically that was um, something we filmed last year uh, that, you know, just came out this past summer. And essentially, yeah, it's a road trip across America. Um, Three Vice employees, myself uh, and Wilbert and Martina, who are like, you know, two friends and co-workers of mine, and basically the idea was that, you know, we're all uh, some kind of minority person. Like, you know, I'm a Muslim American, Will is black, and Martina is an immigrant. And, you know, we kind of wanted to see, like, what's the experience of America like for us? You know, I've, I've seen a lot of movies and TV shows and documentaries and all kinds of stuff about white people going around America and interacting. You know, lots of people have told me how amazing it is to, you know, see all the beautiful things in this country, but... You know, when you're in a minority that's very openly discriminated against, and, you know, I think that in- includes all three of the ones I just mentioned. I think, you know, especially right now, immigrants, uh, Muslims, and black people are embattled, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, like, considering that, you know, we live in this country, too, uh, you know, like, the whole idea of America as this, like, big, diverse melting pot, like a nation of immigrants or people from all over the place, is now sort of being co-opted by white Americans, like, you know, across the country, uh, you know, trying to edge us out, you know, of of what is, uh, you know, rightfully our culture and our country and our government and our system, our way of living, you know. So I thought it was like a a pretty important um, kind of research trip almost, you know, to see how people would react to us. And I think what we found was, um, you know, kind partially what we expected in that on an individual level, you can engage with a lot of people and, you know, you can have a fun conversation, eat a meal, chill out, have a laugh with somebody. But ideologically, um, you know, their beliefs and the way that they want to live their lives in a lot of cases are very exclusive to us wanting to live ours. <laughs> <You know? laughs> yeah. There was some conflicting, uh, visitors or, or whenever you guys were traveling you know i love the show i watched a uh, majority of the episodes and um you know i think it was kind of eye-opening uh overall but uh do you think that with you guys traveling to certain parts of the nation uh that it kind of so were you trying to showcase the the complete uh opposite spectrum or more yeah right? yeah I mean, I, I would say that, you know, like what we got was just like a sampling of the United States, right? Like this is a big country. There's people from all over. There's like these sort of subcultures within America everywhere. You know, we didn't explore, um, you know, sort of like the the northern Midwest, for example. You know, like like we didn't uh, we didn't go through like, uh, you know, Minnesota and Illinois, you know, we didn't go to Chicago. We didn't go to uh, a lot of different places in Texas. I mean, we spent two full episodes, I think, in Texas and mm-hmm. still only scratched the surface. So it, it's a really big country. I mean, it would be cool to, you know, I'm not sure if we're going to do, you know, this type of thing again or if I am necessarily. But, you know, it, it is a really big country. And I think, like, you know, it, it's important to sort of take into account, you know, exactly how diverse it is. And it, it's an interesting thing, you know, because, like, the country being 
like you look at Europe, right? I mean, you know, physically you're looking at like a similarly sized landmass, right? Mm-hmm. And all these people from all these different countries who speak completely different languages, their their you know their governments and their countries have descended from completely different ancient empires, right? Mm-hmm. They somehow manage to understand their differences and get along, yet. You know, you find a community of white people somewhere in the middle of America somewhere, and they would swear to God that everything outside the border of their town is like the devil. Yeah, you know what yeah. I mean? And, and like, and that's a crazy thing. I think that, the you know, America as a country has fostered this kind of attitude in a lot of places in the United States because it's easier to govern people when they're scared of each other, you know? True. And I, I agree with that. Yeah, so so you know, I, I think that it's it seems like, you know, uh, it's it's kind of deliberate almost that people are like this, and also xenophobia. I mean, in America, we've really redefined it. Like honestly, like we know that an American soldier can end up in like you know Waziristan in the middle of fucking nowhere. You know, doesn't speak the language. He's like a basically an en- enemy combatant in the whole country. But if he goes into a village. They'll protect him and feed him and be like, you know what? You're a human being. Right, You're a right. guest. Like, whatever, right? And that, but you think that would happen to my ass? I walk <laughs> in one of these small towns in, like, you know, in the middle of America, a bunch of white people. I got a big beard. My name's Abdullah. Yeah. They would ch- they'd chase me out of there with pitchforks and shotguns, you it, know? It would definitely take a certain kind of individual to, uh, to help you out in, in that area for sure. Yeah. Uh, right. But, I mean, bringing – speaking of that – um, a lot of those people probably never leave their hometowns either. And you said in the, um, you said like in the first episode, I think your parents before you were born and some siblings went on a trip similar to that in the seventies. Yeah. And, um, did you guys, when you got back from that trip, even though you didn't, you may not have saw as much as they did when they went, uh, did you guys have conflicting stories or similar stories of just interactions with people due to like, cause obviously the climate for, uh, you know, tensions between yeah. ethnicities and races and, and religions are, are higher probably than they were then. So was that yeah. how, I mean, like what was the differences and some similarities with that? So, yeah, I, I mean, that that's a really interesting point actually. Cause you know, I like now I rarely think of our trip in that context, but it's very true that that was like sort of the precursor to me. And that was a trip that was before I was born. Right. So it was like my mom, my dad, and my older brother who was little then, they drove across the country, they saw the Grand Canyon, they went to Four Corners, et cetera, right? So, like, at the time, there wasn't as much of, you know, uh, discrimination against Muslims in America. Um, but, you know, like, th- the interesting point about that is that, you know, and, and I think what played into the fact that it was not only me, uh, but also a black man and also an immigrant, is that, like, at any given time, America has to hate somebody, right? <laughs> like, like, like white America has to have somebody that it blames for their problems or that it fears, right? And it's like, you know, like right now, I think we're at a time where because, because the minority populations in the U.S. are growing, because we as minorities are becoming, you know, like really important parts of our society and our economy, you know, the, the hatred for, you know, any that would be reserved for any individual race is sort of being like fired out indiscriminately towards anybody and everybody. Right. So it's like, you know, you have a bunch of scared people in America who are scared because they're scared because they watch Homeland or whatever. Right. And right. then you have like a, a presidential <laughs> candidate who like plays on those fears. But it's not enough to just be like Muslims are scary ass people who are going to kill you. Right. Right. It's. Like he's got to, he's got to go at everybody. He's got to go at immigrants. He's got to really play up those fears because, like you know, like now is now is the best time to drum up support for somebody for a fear mongering candidate like that because people are ne- have never been this dumb, <laughs> and, and yet have never had this much access to information, right? So it's like you know those those sort of like. Like, there's this idea that in America, like, our our system of education has always been very bad. We've been behind other, you know, uh, first world countries for a really long time. And on top of that, like, our people, our citizens spend a crazy amount of time on the Internet, right? And when they're on the Internet, they're really just, they're not, like, 
you know, getting like a fair and balanced sampling <laughs> of all the news that's out there, right? They're reading stuff that is, you know, going to reinforce their own beliefs. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And like, and in that, like, you know, we have this incredibly informed but incredibly stupid populace, right? That's just like, now feels like, thinks it's smart. You know, he who knows not and knows not, he knows not, is the most dangerous type of fool, right? Because like, these are people who assume that they know, right? Because they've seen pictures on the internet, because they've read articles. Right, right. But they know so, so wrong. They know less than little. They know wrong. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, I don't know. Like, like to me, the only way to go about it, and also me saying this, these are like prejudices that I have about the country, right? And right. now perhaps like they're a little bit more researched in the sense that we, we did go across the country and meet these people. It's like, you know, you wonder who is it that's voting for Donald Trump. We talked to a lot of people who were voting for Donald Trump, or at least were at the time. Uh, you know, and it's like, I don't know, it, it's, it's, it's scary. It, we obviously have a, had a completely different path in front of us. And also there's the expectation for me, and I think Wilbert experienced some of this too, in that, like, I'm a pretty, like, you know, for a, a white American I'm an easy Muslim to talk to or, you know, like I speak English, I, I speak native English, I'm an American, yeah. you know what I mm -hmm. mean? Like I watch football, like, you know, I, I do all these things that makes it easier for them, like, you know, to interact with me and that sort of helps to like bend their stereotypes of what Muslims are a little bit, but they're still deeply, deeply racist people. Like <laughs> they won't, they won't meet me and say like, Oh, maybe, you know, I was wrong to generalize about Muslims. They'll say you're, you're cool. one of the good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you're you're <laughs> cool. Speaking of which, <clears throat> your one of your trips, one of your first stops was uh to the Bundy Ranch. Yeah. Um so how crazy was that just meeting him and then I did find it weird that you guys chose that episode to shoot guns as well. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Weird thing. Right. And, and that, I mean, honestly, like everything just kind of played out uh, in front of us. I mean, we had a, we had a meeting with Bundy. We showed up. He was like, you know, dressed. He was ready to talk. You know what I mean? He, he was like, he was kind of camera ready. Right. When we got there. And I was wondering, you know, how real the conversation would get. Cause I was like, this guy's going to, you know, try to say something diplomatic, but like, you know, again, like his idea of, uh, you know, like he felt justified in generalizing about black people, but he was basically like, oh man, like, you know, when I said that all black people, uh, you know, should be slaves or were better off as slaves, I didn't account for the one guy who shouldn't be a slave. Who showed you know up at I my mean? house. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, like that was his sort of rationale for the whole thing. And I think like that's the kind of divide that I was the most interested in, you know, in, in kind of exploring on this is that like, even the standards, where it's we're such a fragmented national culture that even like the standards for, um, you know, like what one person thinks is morally or ethically right, you know, mm -hmm. is like, like you know, from Clive and Bunny's perspective, he's like, oh man, like uh, black people are poor and they're suffering all these crimes and stuff. Like they were better off when they just lived in our house with us. Like, like to him, <laughs> like that, it, that makes sense. And he doesn't see like you know. Uh, institutional oppression, right. right? Like you know, putting black people into the you know the poor communities or you know the the disposition that that they're in now, like all across America. Like to him, it's like this cut and dry thing of like, oh, like they're poor and they're killing each other, so you know they're better off as slaves. Like, and that's such a like fucked up thing to do. Like, I, I don't know. Like, it, the one thing I like got from this, and you know, it, it's it's a little it's a little difficult to verbalize because like you know, like I, I'm surrounded by white people. I have a lot of white friends. You know what I mean? It's like, um, you know, I, I don't, I don't have a, a prejudice when it comes to white people. Right. But it's like one thing that I have to say that evidently like white people don't just oppress black people and specifically black people. They love oppressing black people. <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, it, it, it's so a crazy ass thing. It's like, you know, you go from like these you know, like, okay, slavery. It's like, we abolished slavery, then they had Jim Crow. You, you, you know, we got rid of Jim Crow, and, like, you know, all the way up until now, we still have, like, voter rights laws, and mm -hmm. you still have a candidate who essentially almost openly, you know, like, says racist things about black people. You have your first black president, 
He was like one of the most dignified presidents we've ever had. And, you know, and he's like treated like with such disrespect and, you know, he's degraded and just, you know, humiliated. It's not that, you know, and, and like after hundreds of years and generations of this shit and something that's so obviously morally wrong, a country that was founded on Christianity that, you know, wants to subjugate an entire race of people, like, I, that's the confusing thing to me. And that's sort of the reason that I don't really think that there's a solution for the race issue in America until white people are outnumbered by minorities, right? Mm -hmm. Because, like, as, as long as, it, like, you know, this will just keep happening. You know, you had overseers chasing slaves, like, you know, grabbing them and bringing them back to plantations and chaining them up. And now you have cops, like, you know, just just shooting unarmed black people. You know what I mean? Like, right. they, lo they love doing it. I I'm, will never think again that they just do it or that it's some sort of social construct or blah, blah, blah. They love it. Yeah, that's one of the topics that unfortunately comes up here on the podcast just because we try not to cover a bunch of, like, those kind of negative current topics, but it just seems to be an ongoing trend lately. But uh, mm -hmm. that kind of brings back to that, Nevada episode where you guys were talking about gun um, gun control and uh, Will's parents are cops. Yeah. And um, oh, the female's name. Um, Martina. Martina. Yeah. Uh, she was blatantly against owning guns in general. So like how like after that episode when the cameras weren't rolling and stuff like that, I'm sure you guys were discussing some of that. Um, between between yourselves, I mean, I, that's probably a big divide within the three of you guys. Yeah, I, I mean, there is a lot there. Like, like you know, Will is like kind of a country boy in some senses. Like, I mean, he's from Cleveland, he's from a city, but like you know, he has these sort of like you know, he has experienced sort of you know, middle American white culture. And in that, he's attuned to it. You know, like he grew up around it. He grew up as many like you know like as much farm culture as he did like urban culture right or, or whatever like rural american culture and and it's a crazy thing also i think wilbert is in a very unique position in terms of perspective in america because like i mean you know he's a black man he reports on this stuff he's very involved in it he's in it you know what i mean like he's familiar with the issues he's very up on it right mm -hmm. and yet you know a lot of the vitriol that comes from young black people right now, you know, you see like, you know, on all these sort of social media campaigns, it's just like all over the place is against the police, right? Because like the police is almost like it's like the natural enemy of like a young black man, you know what I mean? Or like that's the way it's been set up right. in the United States. And here we have a guy who's both his parents are cops. And I remember, you know, like I, I always forget that Will's parents are cops, or at least before, <laughs> like while we were still filming. Like, I knew, you know, I've known Will for years. I know that his parents are cops, but he's told me that. But I would forget about it, and we would be, like, you know, somewhere, and I would just, you know, go off on a default rant about the cops. I'm not a huge fan of the police, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Like, I, I've, had, I've had pretty bad experiences with the police. Like, I think in general, like, I don't trust police officers. Like, I don't think I would... You know, a lot of people say, like, oh, yeah, everyone loves hating on the police until they have to call the cops because they're in trouble. Right. I, I honestly, and even if I saw some shit going down, I would be scared to call the cops because I think they would try to implicate me. You know what I mean? And I, like, Yeah, I agree. Yeah, like, like you know, in, in the past, I've seen stuff like that happen. I was just telling somebody the story the other day that in Philadelphia, uh, when I was in college, like, you know, uh, I was at a buddy's house and his neighbor in the building was just wiling out and like going nuts and like he was on speed or something and he was just going ape shit. And we were just, you know, like watching football and like smoking a J or something. And we called the cops and the cops came up and they basically left that guy alone and they harassed us for an hour. <laughs> they were like, you know what I mean? And I was like, you wow. fucking stupid pigs. Yeah. Like th this is why, you know, nobody trusts your ass because like, you know, you're shitty at your job. And, like, you know, in that, like, you know, we were talking about something like that. I was talking about high school where the cops used to chase. They're all fucking, fucking cops, right? And Will, like, you know, heard the whole thing. And it was like, yeah, so, you know, like, because both my parents are cops. And I, like, realized that I had been really open about, you know, <laughs> something, like, like, kind of offensive to someone whose parents would be cops. You know what I mean? Like, that, that's his mom and his dad both, you know, that I'm mm -hmm. talking about there. 
And I'm like, oh, yeah, you can never trust the cop. And, like, my whole thing about that is that if you become a police officer, you are, you know, you're automatically supporting a system, you know what I mean, that, that elevates armed people with, who can use their weapons with impunity over regular people. I think that that, like, creates this sort of unnatural balance. I think cops power trip because they have, you know, the ability to do so. You know what I mean? Right. I mean, like, I'm like Sway, and I don't have the answers for, for yeah. that particular <laughs> for that particular issue. But I was on both sides because I didn't want to have a firearm at all. And mm. just with the current situation of some things, and I was watching Doomsday Prepper at the time, uh, mm. I, did buy, I did buy a firearm. Uh, so I have one, but... I don't know if I'd give it up just because like, like Bubba was saying in Nevada, you know, other people have guns and like cops have guns. Uh, mm -hmm. So it's kind of hard for me to think about giving up my gun, although I don't foresee me using it, you know, in any harmful sense, hopefully ever. But it's just that weird security that uh, they're out there. So I may as well have one just to have one. Right. And what was your thought process behind getting a gun? Like what kind of gun did you get? Um, I got a, it's a Ruger P95. Basically, I just walked into the gun store and I was like, I just want like your beginner style gun. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it's just like a regular nine millimeter. Um, I've taken it to the range probably like 25 times and I've owned it for five years. So I've, I've, I'm not really active with it at all. But I remember being nervous about having it for a while. I was nervous about it just in general, just having it in my house. Mm -hmm. you know? I guess just like knowing the firepower and just like the detriment, you know, it could be detrimental to anybody, myself, anyone, but that's all yeah. subsided now, you know, I'm used to it, but it's, it was weird that I, you know, felt that when I first purchased it though. Yeah. You know, and I think it's like, I always try to sort of step outside of my own, you know, uh, prejudices, right? Because just like anybody else, like I have prejudices, you know what I mean? Like that's, I think that's how human beings interact with the world is, you know, you touch a stove, it burns you once, you don't touch it again. You actually are <laughs> developing weird little like prejudices, like, you know, that get you through life because we can't see the future. Right. Mm -hmm. And in that, like, you know, I do have a level of understanding about like, you know, owning a gun or like, you know, wanting to protect yourself. I think the thing with it is it depends on where you live. Like a lot of people, you know, I think are overprotecting themselves in some way. You know what I mean? And, and then it's like, it, you, is it worth, okay, so the threat level, there's a certain percentage chance that someone's going to break into your house and try to kill you or take your shit, in which case you should have a gun for that, right? Mm -hmm. But if there's like, you know, there's a, like, depending on where you live, there might be a greater chance that your house gets struck by lightning or attacked by a bear. Like, do you have a lightning rod on top of your house? <laughs> like, you know, is that like, it, like, because there's a one in whatever million chance someone's going to, like, lightning's going to strike your house. How many people got fucking lightning rods on top of their houses? I mean, that seems like a major threat, right? But it's like, when people talk about the threat, I think really what they think is that guns are fucking cool, which they are. I've played with guns, toy guns, since I was a kid, right? <laughs> Firing a real gun on the show, pretty sweet. Gotta say, like, you know, we talk about the Second Amendment, but... Firing a gun is a pretty sweet thing. It feels a little bit too powerful, something too powerful for a person. Exactly. To be was that your hand. first time? That was my first time shooting a handgun, yeah. Okay. I shot, I've an, shot a couple rifles. It's before. crazy when you've never done it before and you actually feel it in your hand for the first time. I can yeah. only imagine what her uh, Martina. what Martina's feelings were because I'm sure she didn't had no idea like like I didn't. I had no yeah. idea and it was a, yeah. She had those closing statements on that first episode saying that she really enjoyed the rush. Uh, we're yeah. all for it. So uh, yeah. Yeah, I was gonna ask you a question because I, I know you were talking about uh, the systematic hate uh, because. It reminded me of what you were saying. Um, like Dick Gregory kind of says, you know, white people or you white folks. Uh, but he's not talking about every white person in general. Yeah. Um, because, I mean, like Dave's Canadian. You know, I'm half Filipino or whatever. Um, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> but, well, you know, I'm American. That's right. I, I kind of um, just congregate with everybody else. You know, and mm. we're also younger uh, age, so we don't necessarily identify with that systematic white America kind yeah. of talking about like and by that I'm I kind of grasp when Dick Gregory says it he's talking about uh wealth like the difference between blue collar and white collar that's right. what I would get from it and I try to tell everyone because when you have Dick Gregory when you try to show someone a Dick Gregory video and he's just talking about white boy and white this it's kind of like 
generalizing right yeah that and like you have the old black guy just saying it and it kind of erases whatever point he's trying to make too so it kind of true yeah white people watching that are like well i'm not gonna do i'm not gonna watch this so yeah yeah you i, I think that's an interesting thing and it also like you know I, I think it says something about the audience i guess when i look at it at least from my perspective like my priority isn't necessarily to to make um you know like the majority culture more comfortable right mm -hmm. but my priority is to, is to sort of like you know um as much as i can expose what the real dynamic is right and that i, I think like that's when it comes down to it and you're absolutely right about the generalizing thing because like you know like i for for sake of ease you know i will say like white Americans, black Americans, Muslim Americans, when there's very different, there's a lot of Muslim Americans who would look at me and be like, we don't consider you a Muslim American. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. But it's like, I think it's like, it's really your race in America is defined by your experience a lot of times. And regardless of what your beliefs are, you know, like I said, like a lot of my homies are, are white guys who are totally open-minded dudes, right? But still like their experience of life is never going to be, you know, the same like, as, yeah. It's not going to be the same as mine. And they're never going to understand it. So, meaning, like, I was with a buddy of mine, a white dude at an airport several years ago, and he made a joke about a bomb, right? <laughs> and I was like, I was like, uh, yo, don't do that when you're with me because, like, that could be trouble. And he goes, oh, I think you're being a little overly sensitive. And you, you know what I said? I was like, how the fuck do you know? Yeah, you're gonna get pulled. You're gonna get pulled aside into a small room and latex yeah, gloves like, and stuff. Yeah, I was like, you have never had to think twice about what you say in public because you're white. You know what I mean? Like, and that inherently, like, the guy was a homie of mine. I was traveling with him. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? He's like, he's a white dude. He's an American dude. He's open-minded. He's you know voted for Obama, right? But he doesn't know. Like, right. you know, and that that that's the thing is that like. If you are white in America, you will have a certain experience. And it's like, I mean, in most places, it'll be a good experience. But shit, you go to North Philly and you probably will get rocks thrown at you. Yeah, yeah. No, you know I mean, what I mean? It, the, <clears throat> one of the good things about, I believe, uh, not only Vice, but the channel Vice Land, and then your show in particular, uh, <clears throat> it makes you question a lot of other things. Like when you guys were talking about Mount Rushmore and the way that Will just, or, or maybe uh, I think you were talking about just like, how people, you know, mythologize like our history and, and everything like that. And we carve, you know, just men's faces into rocks and stuff like that. You get, I question that in my head. And then also it opens the door for like empathy and stuff like that, which obviously a lot of more people need just to be able to put themselves in other people's shoes. Like me as an, as a white American, I can never, I mean, I think even you probably have slightly more. I've had a little more prejudice experience. than me. And you're in just because you the way I'm you 10. look, yeah. But uh, I mean, I understand that like my stroll through life has probably been a lot easier than most because I am white. But I also know when I'm thinking or when I'm watching something or when I'm with another person of color and I'm hanging out, I can kind of somewhat grasp what it's like. But I have no idea. Obviously, I don't have to walk down the street being looked at a certain way or have comments said about me this or the other. You know, so. I don't know. Yeah, no, I, I think th that's an interesting point. And that is like, you know, the way to sort of break the cycle. You know what I mean? It, it's like right now there's this assumption that the majority of white Americans have some kind of prejudice, right? But clearly, like for my immediate surroundings, I know a lot of white Americans who are very open-minded and don't, or you know, like d don't have the, the personality traits that uphold like this kind of, like discrimination, right? So it's like if that becomes the standard in America, right? Like then, you know, like if the if the majority of, of white people in America are not, you know, uh, prejudiced in some way or or are perceived to be more open minded, then it's like you know the entire paradigm changes, right? Mm -hmm. Like you know, it, like like generalizing is a tough thing. I think being a minority person in America you are forced to generalize a little bit. I think, I think you have to. It's, it's like, you know, like, um, 
you know, like I shave before I get on a plane every single time, right? I have a big beard. It grows really fast, right? It's True pretty that. gnarly beard, right? But I trim that beard before I get on a plane because I've been on planes when I've had a big beard, right? And I mean, you won't believe, I don't know how strangers look at you, you know, on average. They just tell I me know. I have a cool beard. Yeah, yeah. They just right? tell me, like, I get high fives and drinks pop for me at the bar sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but, you know, it's like th that when you experience that, you know, yeah. or like a, a weird thing to me that I've had happen and it's a little off putting and I always find it kind of funny. But if you think about it, it's really sad is that um, on the street or wherever else, like someone would like corral their children away from me mm. or like would see me coming or, you know, like I used wow. to be in a band with a bunch of brown dudes who looked like me, you know, a bunch of punk brown dudes. Right. And, like, people would literally, like, see us down the street and grab their kid's hand. You know what I mean? And, and like, that I thought was such a fucked up thing because, like, we're all, you know, like, we're all very gentle people. I'm, I'm a pretty gentle guy. I, I have nieces, you know, I'm very close with, you know. Uh, I've worked with kids for, for years, you know. So it's, it's weird for me to see that. And, like, every time I see that, what I think is, like, who's the monster? Like, me? For having a beard or your kid for now having this experience yeah. of like you should be scared of a brown man with a beard you know what i mean like your kid's gonna grow up to be like the next hitler you yeah. know what i mean well that's like, all that, i mean it's all those are taught that that's taught obviously you know that that kid probably goes to school and plays with everybody else yeah yeah you, you know, know i mean so perhaps, yeah. not to change the subject drastically, but you want, yeah, we'll, li we'll lighten it up a little bit because you did bring up your band and uh, JP yeah. did did find that out. Uh, so you were in a punk band. Not only that, but you also wrote for uh, you did some writing for what is it? Foundation magazine and noisy. Oh, wow. Yeah. You guys went deep. I went on your LinkedIn, dog. <laughs> I went on your LinkedIn. Uh, so you did. And then you, I guess you had some articles published in DJ Tech Tools. Is that right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did a couple stories for DJ Tech Tools. Um, as, honestly, DJ Tech Tools is one of I, like so. I, I I produce music. Um, you know, I rap and produce beats and stuff. I've DJed for a long time. What's your DJ so name? I, uh, I I always go by T Kid. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So um, yeah, which is why I wrote the Weed to get calm under. But also um, yeah, yeah. Like like producing music you know, has been like my first love, I think forever. You know, I, I think still it's, you know, I, I do cannabis content and I do, you know, the production stuff. I love it. I really love my job. But to me, like still, I think, you know, my deepest passion is, is making music. And the funny thing about it is I don't think I'm good enough at it probably to ever make a career out of it, but I just enjoy doing it. And to me, I think like, you know, everybody needs that kind of thing. That's why I do it. And DJ Tech Tools, is like is a fucking amazing site man it's like one of the best sites on the internet i think just because like if you're a, a nerd if you're a gearhead you know if, or if you're a producer like it is this really useful like treasure trove of information and tips and stuff i think it's changed the way that i produce and yeah i wrote a couple things for them foundation magazine that is a deep cut i don't think i've ever like <laughs> even i haven't even thought about it it was like oh seven i think is what it said you yeah, yeah, yeah. And and this was like a very short lived magazine. Basically something that should have existed more online but existed in print instead. It was all about mixtapes. And at the time this was sort of the last hurrah of CDRs. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like yeah. there was like people were selling mixtapes all over the place. Like I don't know if now you go to like Canarsie or whatever and see a guy with a blanket out selling like a bunch of CDs. Like I think you, you can know. still. I think when we go yeah? to, if you go to Swap Meet here, I think there's a guy trying to hustle like you know, three CDs for five bucks or something like that, and they're all printed on Epson ink. Yeah, 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 exactly, man. That that that's the shit. I kind of love that. that. There's something very like you know, um, nostalgic to me about that. And I really did enjoy uh, being at Foundation just because it was like it was a startup. Hmm. <laughs> Internet connection. You know. Oh, and this was yeah, it was just a just the very beginning, and it was fun. I mean, I, I wonder where those guys are now. Actually, the guys, there was three dudes who ran that magazine. Um, yeah, I have no fucking idea where they are. <laughs> so what's the uh, what's the stuff with noisy that you did? Uh, it said that you were writing electronic music or you were doing some electronic music stuff. 
Yeah, so basically the first, I mean, I started writing for Vice in 2011, and the first place I was writing for, it was like Noisy had just launched. And before that, I was at MTV doing like music coverage. And then, yeah, like, I mean, basically I wrote about electronic music for Noisy and then the Creators Project, and then I worked on Thump. So like electronic music was has always been a big thing uh, for me. Um, you know, like basically for every possible channel that I could, I covered electronic music, you know, and it was a lot of fun. I mean, that was sort of like my, my come up in writing and at Vice. And, you know, I, I think, I, I think it speaks to like sort of the really fantastic, like fluidity that you have at this company and that, you know, if you like, you can do stuff for different departments. And I've, I've really, you know, had the like the benefit of being able to take full advantage of that. Like, you know, I still work for a bunch of different departments. Like now, I mean, like I've done a bunch of different projects for Vice. I've written and produced and done all kinds of shit. And like now I think I'm actually, I have the most franchises at once that I've ever <laughs> had at the company. You know, and it's like I do, um, Vice does America and then also Bong Appetit and then also Smokables and then also I do a podcast. I do another short form called Abdullah on Abdullah. There's like a lot of different stuff. Hey, what's up? Do you need this room? Okay, cool. Um, but yeah, I mean, like, you know, all that stuff kind of, uh, you know, it's, yeah, it's, it, it's crazy to think about how many different projects there have been. Hey, guys, I actually have to run mm -hmm. um, as it is almost two, and I'm uh, about to lose my conference room. <laughs> but um, yeah, so. It, uh, you you want to you want to do like a closer like a final thing? Yeah, um, we missed over all the marijuana stuff, but I'm sure that's like a whole other podcast with you. Um, yeah, but anyway, that, that's dope. Uh, we appreciate you uh, being on, even though we had some issues, obviously, with the audio firsthand. Uh, and if you're ever in Northeast Florida and you want to spin, we could probably make that happen. Oh, that's awesome to know, man. Shit. Yeah, you know what? I'll take you up on that. And I'll tell you what, if you guys want to, you know, chat again at some point, whatever, just shoot me an email. You've got my contact. So, uh, yeah. We'll do, Let man. Let me know when well, you want to do it again. We appreciate yeah. it very much, though, man. Uh, we'll get back in with you in a couple of weeks, months or so. Oh, what do you have coming up that you want to Oh, yeah. Up? So, coming up, there's going to be a new season of Smokables. There's going to be some new Bong Appetites, a bunch of other stuff like that. Um, All on Vice? All on Vice, everything. Yeah, man, we didn't even get into the Bong Appetit. That that's something I really wanted to bring up, but we'll we'll get into it next time with you. Sounds good. Thanks so much for having me, guys. No problem, man. You have a good night. I right, take care. Easy. Well, there was that. He good. Yeah, man, that was dope. Damn, if we didn't have all those audio issues beforehand, we'd have a legit yeah. hour with them. We had about fifteen minutes of uh, issues. In the beginning, there, man. Yeah, that was dope. But we didn't really get to talk about a lot of the stuff that he did. Right, you know, because I did have some other questions, and um, you know, I, I wanted him to talk overall. I don't want to interrupt him, yeah, um, because his experience overall is something that I think uh, we kind of preach about. You know, you should get out there, educate yourself, uh, and just try new things. But also, um, do y'all want to get on, Mason, Dad? Do y'all want to be on the podcast? Uh, I'm, I'm just here watching. I mean, at this point. We got like another hour. No, we got like 40 minutes or something like that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. We have the option to if you want to. All right. <clears throat> we have my dad and uh, Mason Masters in the building for the podcast with T-Kid, a.k.a. I'm Your Kid, a.k.a. Abdul Saeed. No, that was dope. I mean, that was probably our most legit guest and probably uh, definitely the worst start to a podcast we could ever possibly want. Yeah, and you know, it's one of those things, even if you test it out, you know, what are you going to do about it? So, you know, I wanted to kind of see what his uh, podcast was as well. And yeah, geez, mm -hmm. yeah, no, there was a lot of things I'd like to have gone over with him. Right. Uh, he brought up, I mean, we did go over some of the things that I really wanted to get into him with. I wanted to get into more so uh, interactions with people in the country as far as what the general climate for those people were. Yeah. I mean, we kind of brought up um, me and you aside from them before before this podcast like you know and you did bring it up on this podcast the locations they chose you know like some of them weren't like big yeah cities and metropolitan areas where obviously ideals and and are gonna morals be, are gonna be more, different more along our lines yeah there are there's smaller little pieces of the country which it's good because people do need to see that and i'm sure 
that's something you know that is a part of what they were going for as the show you know was being made so and i think you know if, if we had more time we could definitely nail down a few of those things uh anybody that's watching vice knows that the channel is very open-minded i think mm -hmm. or um liberal i guess you could say yeah and you know what what he was saying i want to go back there and kind of clarify it because you know i, I don't want him to come off as a the white america thing a, right, right. Yeah. i don't want to be like well i'm a muslim and you know, I hate white people. Yeah, right, exactly. Well, obviously, white people are the devil I mean, for Muslim York, people too. So. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, and his his day to day is much different walking down the street as a Muslim than it is walking down the street here, which I mean, it is the South here as well. But uh, no, yeah, I think when people hear that, it automatically <laughs> just like rings in their brain, like, oh, yeah. that's you know bad. But it's a way to that I think people view America is what he's saying white america yeah and there you know like when when people say hey what what are you when they ask me what my, right. my ethnicity is you know i always gear toward america i say but you know i'm gonna just say i'm i'm white or, or whatever it doesn't mm -hmm. really matter and then oh because i'm tan you know i'm filipino <laughs> yeah. whatever and it doesn't matter like my interaction with you isn't gonna change when when i tell you what my my background is right Right. right and you know we have a very diverse group like i've always um in college and school whatever just none of my friends are, are the same and i always want to clarify that for for a lot of people out there i mean yeah you have a, a bunch of friends that are different right. color different yeah ideas and stuff like that and i ideologies um i don't want the show to take that negative turn. I mean, we, we do talk about uh, things here and there. And we'll, you know, he started talking about the police issue. Yeah. I mean, I wanted to get into all that. stuff. I mean, yeah. like I'd like to get into it with him about all that stuff. Cause you know, but I, you... I feel the same way yeah. and I feel the same way as a white person. And I feel, I feel like just generally afraid all the time. <laughs> you know what I mean? It could, it could be cause of like my actions or what I choose to do. Uh, but it could also just be that, you know, I don't want to get pulled over for like a traffic ticket and then all of a sudden just be in jail or shot. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know. Like it's just, and I, you know, it's only worse if I was, I'm, I'm white. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, if you don't comply, there's, but you know, I could also start being like, I want my lawyer. I want my lawyer and stuff. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, I mean, some people don't, and they're not. Yeah. It could be, I, I don't know. I'm not the one to say whose fault it is. Yeah. But that's another thing, too. Like, if you are being profiled, right? Or if you're used to being profiled, and all of a sudden you got another cop on you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Obeying the law. Yeah. Obey the law. I'm always like, yes. Fall in the line. Fall in the line. Well, even I was taught growing up, you know, like no matter what kind of uh, authority figure it is, whether it's an older um, gentleman. Yeah, exactly. Like a stranger that's just, you know, yes, sir. No, sir. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. It's mm -hmm. just like manners uh, is what I kind of consider them as. Uh, and there's always different reactions to certain things. So. You know, however you're going to take it. Whether... It's just a stressful... I don't want to be put yeah. in a stressful situation with someone who's also stressed out and worried the same way. I'm fucking worried. The only problem is you got the gun and I don't got the gun. That's I don't want to yeah. be in that situation. I wanted to talk about the uh, political... Like what he thought about maybe the up and coming vote. Beforehand and after. Right. Yeah. So, I mean, he, he already kind of saw how it is out there. Um, I mean, we don't know which way he's leaning towards, but he's definitely not voting for Trump. I agree with yeah. that. I think we know <laughs> But I even wanted to talk about the whole, you know, like uh, going to some place and interviewing somebody that would be maybe a third ticket on the uh, right the on vote, the ballot, or even uh, you know, the whole thing because he does a lot about cannabis. Mm -hmm. um, so we got that vote coming up here in in November for, for Florida. Florida, if you don't know, 
And last time uh, in 2014, we lost it by two and a half percent. Mm-hmm. So it needs to be 60 percent uh, for the medical marijuana vote in Florida. And, you know, I just I think uh, I would like to get his opinion on that overall. Yeah. I mean, my opinion was it was garbage when we didn't get it. and It was only two and a half percent away. Right. And it, they uh-huh. raised it. Uh, probably. I think it's on the uh, the ballot this yeah, time. Yeah, I, th- I think this time around, uh, there's no, no way number. that we cannot get it. But again, I say that and watch. It'll be like a half percent or something like that. It was two and a half percent away. Yeah. If you're going to talk, Dad, you're going to get on the microphone. It was over 50%. So, But the thing is, you need 60%. I know, yeah. You need 60 to change an amendment or something like that, right? I guess. So if you're listening to this and you're in Florida, number two, vote number two, yes. <laughs> in November. But uh, yeah, what are the other things, man? The other things that he was doing, that bong appetit, that was something that I was very, I liked to watch. Yeah, I watched uh, two of the episodes, and for anybody out there, it's the show talks about uh, infusing cannabis into your meals mm-hmm. on a regular basis, or not even a regular basis, but just kind of. It's like a cooking show with exactly. weed. <laughs> It's like, fuck, that's delicious, but with weed. So it's like you get Action Bronson smoking the weed and dabbing and doing all that with his cohorts on the show. The, this time, they're just eating it. Yeah. They're cooking it and eating it. It's on Munchies. One of the ingredients. Yeah, so I think you got... It's online, right? Right. So on Vice.com. I tried to get your login, and for some reason, your login wouldn't let me go to the Vice uh, channel or the app. So I ended up just checking on youtube you can subscribe on youtube and watch a few of the episodes on there oh really for free well some people do also just scam them and yeah. put them out there too so i just got internet today Ooh, for the first time ever well uh at the new place yeah no, no. getting settled in my friend so i we didn't get to talk about uh we were talking about race with abdullah but um when they were in colorado on the vice does america show they went and did the porn thing with Dog yeah. Fart Productions, and I guess they're like the biggest interracial porn production company. I'd like to talk to them about that because that was funny. Not that it was, a, you know, not like that it was interracial, but yeah. it was just funny that they went there and they were part of being right. in the porno. Not in the porno, but they were working jobs on set. It's one of those moments when you find yourself like, what the hell is going on? He seemed like say. he was the only one that was like completely okay yeah. with it. Oh, this is normal. The the girl was, you know, having, yeah. it, you know, she was doing her thing and Will was also having like his issues with being there and just right. with the race, race uh, issue on the, that particular episode. But it was a, de- it was, it was fun. I agree with that. It was fun. But uh, I'm glad everybody did. Tuned in. I think we had a few shares. I want to say thank oh, you. Oh yeah! For, uh, Shout out to that for everybody out there listening. We'll so, definitely, uh, we'll definitely get him back on at some point once we have everything. Uh, once we get the next couple out of the way. But uh, let's let's get back to uh, the new old school podcast. Yeah, we're back. You were at a show last week. I had a couple shows that we didn't really get to talk about. Right. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. now that they're passed, yeah. uh, I was kind of curious because I haven't had a chance. To kind of catch, catch up where you've been moving. Uh, yeah, no, Vortex Springs was the one I did last weekend. Right. Not this past weekend, but two weekends ago. Um, that was with a, out at Ponce de Leon, Florida. That was pretty dope. I still have water in my ear from jumping off the high dive. You know, do the... It's in there good, dude. I don't know. I think this is going to be an ear infection. I'll have to get it situated. Get a um, con ball, and then you put the VIX in there, and then you keep it in your ear overnight. What does that do? Yeah, it's supposed to draw out the vapor. I don't weird. necessarily know. That's it. weird. Oh, I have My mom told me about it. Is that like a, a new thing to do when you're on ecstasy? Uh, put the Vicks in your ear? No, I thought you put the Vicks in your uh, mask. Yeah, that's right. definitely how you do it. And then yeah. you roll or something. So, uh, yeah. No, I did that. And then um, this past weekend, I went to uh, Tampa. The and castle. Yeah, I played, <laughs> I played the fucking dungeon in the castle. I like the, the sound of the castle. It's uh, it looks like a castle, but also when I play in the dungeon, it also looks like a dungeon. So they had little like rooms, like little jail styled rooms, like BDSM. Yeah, yeah, a lot of <laughs> chains, dude, a lot of chains. It was weird. There's some weird shit that goes down in that place. Uh, I would you call it weird or would you call it weird? Uh... I'd call it weird, out of my zone, dude. Okay, so what's weird to you? Maybe normal to other people, so. Leather daddy, I think, is a term that you would use there. Yeah. Not 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 old people, just like leather people, leathery people. 
BDSM. But hey, they liked house music for the first hour, that's for sure. <laughs> Get it. <laughs> well, didn't they like us? So, was, um... That was with George Acosta. Yeah, well, so did everybody... George was in a different area? No, no, no. He played oh. the same... Yeah, he played the same room. Okay. So I just opened up, and then he went on later. So that was fun. That was the first time in Tampa. That was pretty awesome, but... And then you went to the Little Yachty. Oh, yeah, we went to Little Yachty last, la- last night. Yeah, that shit was live, kid. Shout out to Chris for hooking that up with the ticket and uh, the hookup on stage. So, yeah, we get to hung, we get to hang out with Little Yachty last night, me and Kyle, a.k.a. Mandarina, who's been on the podcast. We went last night and hung out. What would you think about that show? You know, like, <clears throat> uh, that No Jumper podcast is the one that put me on to Little Yachty, and I'm not, like, a fan of it. I just wanted to go and see the spectacle of it all, you know? Yeah. Because he's one of those up-and-comer rapper dudes that are just taking the internet by storm. Now, I've never gotten into him, his music, personally. So he's I, almost got like half a billion streams on uh, on SoundCloud or some shit like that. It's something crazy like that. Yeah, we'll have to check that out a little more. I think one of his songs, I think One Night is almost at 100 million or something like that. And that's like out this year. So it's like new-ish. He's part of that new, uh, what that, they, they call it, that uh, uh, freshman club. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's definitely, but he wasn't even out when that like ep, when that article and all that came out. You know what I mean? Like since then, he's blown up. Okay. So it's like, um, yeah, March, April. He started like when we started this podcast is when he started doing something. I don't really get that though. It's all like beats that are like pretty easy, mixed with like some weird kind of mumble rap. So I think they call it a uh, trap soul or kind of like what Bryson Tiller. Oh, I have no idea. Like R&B yeah, or I don't listen to that. trap beats yeah. kind of ish. Yeah. Me, don't listen okay. to it. Sorry, not sorry. Gotcha. Nah, if you're getting trappy, I'm going to get it trappy. Look at her wrist. She could have been a the nina. That, that's what I'm doing. But no, that was pretty crazy. It was a packed house last night and uh, it was, yeah, it was fun to watch. And then uh, I, the, the half the reason we went was for Kyle to like somehow get his Little Yachty remix to Little Yachty. Yeah, check out my mixtape. Yeah, it was kind of like that. And uh, so at the end of the show, like they just go right off. You know what I'm saying? Like Little Yachty and them, like pew, they're gone. They're not even in the back room, in the green room or anything. They're just out. <clears throat> his DJ, DJ Oreo, is sitting there packing up his stuff. And I was like, yo, dude, that's a DJ right there. Why don't you go drop him your USB? I mean, like, shit, he can make, maybe give it to him. And so that's what he did last night. Nice. So he uh, did his little networking. It was like, yo, I made this song. And I was like, did you, is there any way for him to contact you on there? He's like, nah. And I was like, oh, okay. So it just says, Lil Yachty, whatever, remix, Mandarina. That's the only way they know it's him. All right, so Mandarina's going to have to follow up <laughs> on that one <laughs> yeah, for yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, if that works out for him, that's going to be dope. You know who never who knows. He goes, uh, "I'm a DJ, you're a DJ. Maybe you can play this." <laughs> I like I like that though. I mean, you don't got a front for somebody. You're just meeting, like, "Yo, I got this fire." Yeah, you know Check what I mean. And he went up all yeah. awkwardly too, because that's his Kyle. You know, he's like, "Uh, yeah, hey, uh, so I'm a DJ, you're a DJ. You may play this, I guess." So I guess we're gonna get some rain soon. Yeah, I think that hurricane might be coming. You know, I, are the articles true that it's not on the radar? It's not on the radar. Yeah, like some people don't see it on the Doppler. Well, I think I can see it on all day. <clears throat> on the Weather Channel? Oh, it's there, my friend. Yeah. It is there. Some people, I just saw uh, some links go up. No. I'm, I'm going to do the same thing we do every time. Have a hurricane party. Yeah. I'm going to hope this big tree over our house doesn't fall on us. That's for sure. Yo. I have like a giant tree over my house. Yeah, me too now. Yeah, I could get killed. Um, Actually, no. It would fall like right here on the studio part. I'm pretty good. I'm good thing your Medicare is so halfway good. As much as their old trees have fallen down and been trimmed up, the Victorian is still on the beach. <laughs> what are we talking about here? <laughs> We're having family discussion. <laughs> 
So yeah, the hurricane's coming. Everything is knocking three. <laughs> I'm just listening. We gotta, it's get, me him, and my we gotta dad. get him a microphone. Yeah, yeah. If you're gonna talk anymore, we're gonna just put you on the microphone. But um, I'm not really uh, worried about the hurricane, man. No. I'm not worried about the weather. You know, but the, Mason's gonna shred. I'm not He's necessarily worried about it, but it feels that with it being a four right now. So if it's gonna die down, it's probably gonna end up being a three. A three or a two when it hits here, if it yeah. hits here, yeah. Which so. is gonna be pretty rough. It's gonna be rough. Yo, we can hear you guys. <laughs> we can hear you guys on here. <laughs> Carrying through everything. You got newbies in the studio today. Now he's he's. Well, yeah, you're you're a seasoned vet. He's over there quiet. Over there. Mason Master. One of the other things that recently happened that we could talk about on this podcast. I got scary clowned. Did you? Yeah. Where was this? So we were in Lakeland last week. Uh, Dion was doing like some training and whatnot. And so we uh, we were sitting at a hotel and I walked across the street. There was like Longhorn or Chili's or something like that. And I'm walking back by myself and I'm on my phone and I'm literally like almost to the door. And then I hear, Psst. and I thought it was Dion for some reason behind me. So I like just glanced over. It's like a six foot tall dude in a full ass costume with the scariest clown mask on. Straight scariest. up. Scariest. No, scary clown mask. Okay. And uh, I was like, Whoa. I go, huh? <laughs> and he goes, nothing? I said, no. I said, oh, okay. And he just turned around and walked away. And then uh, I just thought that was super weird that that happened. And then I get on Facebook the next day, and there's like four articles about like this phenomena going through the country. Everyone's dressing up like a clown. So I don't get it. It's stupid because I thought like, what if I shot that dude or like, what if I just beat that guy's ass because like that's just stupid, right? You know what I mean? You could turn around, you could stab somebody. Who or knows? then I started thinking like, I was pretty calm with like almost being robbed. You see what I'm saying? Like that dude could have straight up robbed me, and I'd have been like, uh. Well, I, <laughs> I always feel if I'm in that situation, I'm just like, no, nah, I'm good. Like, give me your money. No, nah, I'm cool. No, nah, I'm good. Don't worry about that. But you have to. Do you? Ha- do you? Nah, I'm good. I'm good. That's the way I feel about it. But there's a lot of other things we have going on. Hopefully, uh, we have some other, uh, we have some guests in the mix. Yeah, we have some so, some other guests in the mix. I feel like we're getting a little more legit. legit. Yeah, it only took 25 podcasts to practice for this podcast, which kind of almost failed miserably. <laughs> <laughs> You're a little nervous. Uh, I've been nervous for days. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you got the diarrheas. No, I didn't have diarrheas oh, okay, right. since Easter. But Mason did get me all fucked up, man. The other day, like last week, we were talking. I was like, "Yo, hey, I got fucking uh, Abdul Sahid from Viceland to come on." He's like, "Oh, that's cool." And then I guess after a while, I registered who it was. He's like, "Oh, dude, that's like a serious guest." And I was like, "Yeah, I guess." He's like, "He's like a reporter and stuff." And I was like, "Oh shit, he is a reporter. He's probably like, I gotta do some research." Yeah, you did a little research. You did so, more than I did. Yeah, I watched like all the episodes. And then like today I found out he was like a DJ and did all that other shit and the music stuff. And then like I'm sure like I'll find something else out and be like, oh, shit. Yeah, I didn't want him to come on and be like, you, I know all of this. <laughs> sweating your jock. <laughs> I, I mean, he's just going to have a convo with us. He but did say I ardward him. He was, a, he was a nice guy. Or Nardward. He did say I Nardward him with his foundation magazine. Yeah, I should have grabbed. I should have got vinyl and given it to him as well. <clears throat> Through the mail. The only thing that wasn't good was the initial thirty minutes yeah. of us freaking the fuck out. I felt like he was getting a little. Uh... Huh? What was the issue? The um, I guess the cord that runs from the computer back into the soundboard was like jacked or something like that, and so I replaced it. New ones. Yeah. This whole like makeshift studio is like falling apart. <laughs> No. <laughs> no. Yeah, sometimes they sound legit. Sometimes, you know what? Next time we're just got to fly him down here. He'll play. He'll DJ, and we'll just sit him in the house. There you go. You set him up with a couch. Yeah. And, uh, well, I got a bed in there. A bon appetit. Yeah, bon appetit. Smoke Earls, because maybe by then we'll have medical marijuana. You never know. I want to know what kind of music you listen to as well. You know what I'm saying? That's one. I, I had that on my board. Yeah. So what are you listening to? Because right if he's in like a punk, now? like if he's in like a, he was like a weird kind right. of punk band, he, right? He, then he started talking about rapping and production. Yeah. We didn't even get to fuck. Yeah. 
and it's so hard to do like it's so hard to do one of these interviews too because like you want to try to pay attention to everything that everyone's saying but you're also like trying to formulate a question in your head about what he's saying and then you're like oh he's that person's still talking for a while i've forgotten my question and now i don't even know what he's talking about you know what i mean right you're just reading notes (laughs) <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm reading the damn comments. We have some trolling going on, it seems. Oh, of course we do, per dude. usual. Shout out to all the... Uh... Shout out to all the people who watched and who are listening. We've had a quite quite a few listens in the last couple of weeks. That's another thing. Our podcast is just becoming like such... Kind of weird. Kind of weird, yeah. It's like getting a little bit of ground. And I guess with having guests like Abdullah today, that you know it's only going to further it down the road. So kudos to that. Might want to mention the Patreon page. <laughs> <laughs> you got one up yo go to the tnos.com website you can sign up for our patreon page and support the podcast help pay some server fees maybe i'll get i'll pay mason five bucks to run the fucking audio every now and then i will take out the form of the payment yeah let's go <laughs> pizza <laughs> yeah that's true yo um but we're at an hour now yeah What? You want to cue it? Cue what? The music. Oh, we could if you want to. You want to just shut it down? Yeah. Because we have some other stuff to do for the podcast. Roger that. So, yeah. Thanks for staying around. TNOSpodcast.com. Episode 26. Uh, you can find Abdullah. On Vice. Vice Land. I am your kid on uh, Twitter. And uh, Instagram. Yeah. yeah. Twitter and Instagram. At I'm your kid. I am your kid. And then I'm Lurk City. ASAP. That's ASAP Whiskey. Whiskey. And we're done for the day. Thank you again. Sorry for the late podcast. Sorry for the half kind of podcast. But we'll definitely have Abdullah back on for sure. I think an hour is a good podcast. What are you talking about? Hour and a half is like my ideal though, you know? For what reason? Because it's cooler. Okay. Holler back. More cool than you. Cooler. More cooler.